Hey folks, I'm pleased to be joined by my friend Larry Leckban from Ocheden, Iowa. I've met Larry out on the auction trail a number of times over the years, and Larry has told me about his uh, unique line of equipment, and folks, it's coming up for sale now next Wednesday, October 7th, on the BigIron.com weekly sale, open house uh, in Ocheden, Iowa, at Larry's farm this Saturday, October 3rd. Uh, Larry, uh, you've told me about your line of equipment. Wow, you weren't kidding. It is, uh, it's incredible. Well, yeah, I've got some pretty unusual stuff. Uh, been, well, I had it for probably 70 years collecting stuff. Okay. The, uh, I never got into tractors really until till the uh, 60s. Okay. Something has been restored and repainted 50 years ago already. Sure. Well, folks, uh, you have to go to BigIron.com, and then up in the search box, just type in Larry's last name, L-E-C. B A N D Lek Band. That's one way to. I think it's like 108 items, Larry, on the set. But 108 or 90. Yeah. yeah. And folks, uh, go check it out. It is a really fun list. Now, there's a couple of tractors I wanted to ask you about, Larry. One, you told me about a couple times the last time we bumped into each other in auction. It's a 1940 Farmall A, and it looks like it was just restored, but really unusual story on this folks this is original paint original tires can you tell us about it larry yes uh one time i was headed for minneapolis and the detour for bad on highway 60 so i made a shortcut to sleepy eye stumbled onto a consignment sale going alongside the road stopped looked around and this tractor was sitting there with a quarter inch thick layer of cake dust on it no muffler and front tires were bad the back rear truck a little air in them tractor and as soon as I bought it another 48, 50 year old guy came up and wanted to buy it from me. He was pretty adamant about it. Mm. Finally I asked him why and he uh, he said a young man about his dad's age on a neighboring farm bought the thing and shortly after got drafted in World War II and uh, became a casualty and the tractor had been parked in a barn for over 60 years. Oh wow. That's the way I found it. It's all original paint and everything. So when you got it home and cleaned it up, you, you I probably... got home, cleaned it up and the first thing I did was put pull the pan off to check bearings to make sure everything was fine. Yep. And uh, put a battery in it, messed with it a little bit, put some gas in it, started right up. Mm -hmm. Lights, everything worked. Well, folks, <laughs> you gotta check out the pictures on this 1940 Farm LA. It's, it's literally a time machine. Uh, it looks like new. And tell us about the tires on it. The tires are worth, they look like they probably, anybody that knows tractors, they look like they could have a couple hundred hours on them is all. Mm. Uh, other than that, the front tires were flat and they sat flat so long they were no good. And I really personally think somebody stole the original IH muffler off of it. Mm. Because uh, that, that, the muffler and front tires, the only thing that's not original on okay. it anymore. Well, kind of amazing that uh, you just happened to turn your head and see there was a consignment auction on your new route to Minneapolis that day and decided to stop and then happened across this tractor that didn't look too good and wow and now it's 80 years old and uh, like you say purchased by a young man uh, went off to war and unfortunately didn't come home but a real piece of history there now, a couple other tractors caught my attention one my goodness a 1976 international hydro 100 front wheel assist industrial prototype uh tractor uh backhoe loader that thing i don't i've never seen one like that you've probably never seen one because i think it's the only one in existence mm. history on the thing there was a couple of engineers from international and uh the bore implement in mankato got together and rented a secluded warehouse in New Ulm to be out of sight, out of mind, and they proceeded to put these together. The company gave them six Hydro 100 front wheel assist industrial tractors with stripped, stripped uh, rear quarters, no fenders, no hydraulics, no seat. They proceeded to build these things uh, in that warehouse. How many they got built, I have no idea, but, uh, after uh, after they were at and had this one built, the uh, one engineer and, and the implement 
deer got killed in a head-on collision in a snowbank cut. Mm. They abandoned the whole project. Okay. The story. You know what? Oh, go ahead, Larry. Really unusual, too. Uh, uh, I was looking for a backhoe. I'd put a plow on a tiger. tiger. It's a time plow. And uh, talked to the dealer in Rushmore. He had a used backhoe and, and looked at it. Didn't like it. And, and he called me and told me the Melrose Finance Bobcat people were finance people were there. And they had a backhoe for sale. And I said, well, I was interested. And I said, well, I found a case. I wasn't interested. He said, well, if you don't buy it, we'll put it on an auction in, in uh, Fairmont, Dan Pike. Oh, sure. Fairmont, on such a day, it was the last week in February, I think. A real nice, windy, cold, sunshiny day. It was the last thing on the sale. And I called in a John Deere combine and on and sat and waited. Three times that guy came around and walked around that back, uh, back hole with nice leather trench coat, little quarter shoes, no cap, carrying a briefcase. I became a little worried about, you know, if I could let's be frank about it. Well, anyway, I bought the tractor. He bid on it a little bit, and I bought it. And, uh, of course, batteries were dead. Went and got the pickup and charged batteries. And these two Melrose guys came up with these red uh, pictures on them. His name was Bunny. <laughs> Mr. Bunny. <laughs> anyway, I was standing there and he looked at me and he said, are you Larry? And I says, yeah, are you Bunny? He says, yes. And I got in his face and I says, Bunny, I know you got this listed as being a, a repossession. And uh, but, uh, are you, I, I want to make sure you are thoroughly the owners. I don't want somebody coming on my yard tomorrow and tell me I don't own it. Okay. I was thinking about this other guy. Sure. But anyway, called my hired man on the fire up the mag and come and get it. Well, the next morning about 10.30, I get the call from TCF Finance. He did Plymouth, Minnesota. Did you buy such and such a vehicle on Pike's Hill? Yeah, yesterday, yeah. He said, that's ours. And of course, my first words was like, I usually go bullshit. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I just hung up and yeah. a little bit and hung up and went to my attorney right away and he says, where is it? I said, my shed. He said, well, you can't, they can't cross the line to get it without a lot of paperwork. Yeah. You got some place to take it, take it and leave it there. Yeah. I, I was building a house down 30 miles away. I'll just dig it down. You need the hole. Yeah. That was the end of it. They settled the thing. They were both, both, uh, and finance were both out. Sure. They ended up splitting the money. Okay. Which wasn't a lot, you know, for what right. it was. When did you buy it? And how long ago, roughly, was it, Larry? Oh, that would have been. I put that tiger and tile plow together in 80, 82. Oh, okay. And we hit those big years when they had so much ground idled. Yeah. We ended up putting in a million feet of tile in here. Oh. That was our major backhoe. Okay. And we used it until 90 okay. when I sold, sold the business. Sure. Backhoe. Kind of a one of a kind opportunity for somebody to buy a super unique tractor. Again, check that out, folks. 1976 International Hydro 100 front wheel assist industrial prototype tractor loader backhoe. Now, one other tractor that really caught my eye of yours, Larry, on the sale next Wednesday, October 7th, is that Massey Ferguson 1979 4880 four wheel drive. I think it says just over 3,100 hours on it. Cummins 903 V8 diesel. That thing looks really sharp. What's the story on that one? Uh, that grew up in uh, about five miles from me. Uh, a couple of bachelors in their 80s, mid 80s, had been farming. They, they were farming together for years. They farmed about three sections of ground, and uh, they bought it and they used it the first year. And then one of them developed uh, cancer, and uh, I think he used it a little bit the second year. And uh, then he uh, he succumbed to the cancer. Then the other one quit and ran the ground out. And the thing sat in storage probably for 25 years, maybe. Hmm. 20 or 25 years. Of course, they had no children. Mm -hmm. And finally, a niece took over the, I don't get all what took, took over the, the oper operation. Had a sale and the thing sold on an auction. Okay. And Another uh, farmer about five miles from there bought the thing. He's the guy that put the hours on it. 
topic of beautiful things on of your items on the sale next Wednesday you gotta tell me about that pickup 1967 International 1100B deluxe pickup white that thing uh, that looks like a lot of fun that was that was purchased at a, at a classic car auction in uh, Wakanda South Dakota Gerard oh sure yeah a, okay I guess I didn't even take a trailer to the sale that day I didn't want to buy anything yeah. <laughs> and I brought the last thing and pick up so close and I thought, well, I'll just wait for that pickup. Well, I couldn't resist it because we used to run those things. Well, I can see why you couldn't resist it. It is beautiful. And uh, now, did you get some looks around with cheating when you would drive that thing? Oh, yeah, I get, uh, I don't know if you know, Toby Shine runs a museum in Milford, a uh, car museum. I don't, uh, I've heard of the museum. I don't know, Toby. Do I, it sounds like I need to get down there and check that yeah. out, though, huh? For sale next Wednesday. So that, uh, I tell you, when I see those uh, '60s pickups that look like that, when they come up for sale, it's uh, the interest in them is, you know, you might have calls from all over. I, I understand you have been actually getting calls from all over the place on your equipment here, Larry, the last week or so. Well, I've had calls. I think the farthest I've had one from Washington State. I don't remember what it was on. Oh. And what? Radio of the Massey. Okay. Yeah. Well, folks, again, check it out. Go to BigIron.com. Sale is next Wednesday. Of course, our friends at Big Iron have their online sale every Wednesday. So it's October 7th. And my friend Larry Leckband here from Ocean, Iowa. Just go up to the search box, type in Larry uh, Leckband, L-E-C-K-B-A-N-D-E. You'll see his 100-plus pieces of equipment. Just scroll through it. Some awesome things in there. Now, Larry, I can't wait to come down with our cameras for the TV show. We're going to film a little bit and uh, kind of present this on our TV show. So I really appreciate you telling me about your tractors over the years. And again, I can't wait to get up close and eyeball them. Bring your fishing pole. <laughs> yeah, folks, Larry uh, Larry made his own uh, fishing hole. How many years ago was that, Larry? Uh, it's 10 acres, 25 feet deep. The dam is uh, like uh, just about 40 feet tall. Wow. So I suppose being in the construction biz, building your own fishing pond was no big deal, huh? Well, I didn't get it. That's where I got in the construction business because I had, uh, had the equipment. I bought a scraper and, and uh, got in it. And my, my young wife helped me and we got it. Now, now, I am not much of a fisherman, Larry, I confess. My two younger brothers are very good. But if I brought my fishing pole, what might I catch at Larry's pond there? If you're lucky, you could get an eight-pound bass, but the little ones will take it before he gets there. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Well, again, looking forward to come down. And again, folks, there's an open house Saturday, uh, October 3rd. What are the hours, like 11 to 2 on that, Larry? A big iron said 11 to 2, but as far as I'm concerned, it could be all day. Well, if you're free Saturday, folks, get to Ocheden, Iowa. Go visit my friend Larry and just get up close to his equipment. And there, there's nobody more fun to talk to than Larry. Tremendous knowledge about farm equipment, passionate about it. And again, all this equipment sells next Wednesday, October 7th, on the BigIron.com online auction. Larry, thank you so much for, for giving us some uh, great background information. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Greg. Yeah. Your next piece of equipment is on MachineryPeat.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineryPeat.com.